All right, something for the holidays. I uh, needed, needed a more substantial thing to do. So I ordered this some time ago. It uh, finally arrived. Uh, it came from Turkey. Believe it or not, Turkey. Uh, Summers International. Uh, it is a mini kit. 50879. Now everybody knows this kit. Everybody's seen everybody build this kit. So uh, it's not going to be so much of a surprise to anybody, but um, it'll be fun and it's pretty involved. Um, it is a, get out one of the boards here, show you the, uh, show you the front panel board. It is a QRP Labs QCX Mini 5 watt CW transceiver. Um, yeah, pretty cool little kit. Uh, it's kind of the hot selling, <laughs> hot selling item, and uh, it's uh, it's pretty fancy. Um, and I think I will I will enjoy building it. Now, a lot of the hard work's been done for you, uh, so uh, all of the service mount stuff is, is already put down, and it's double-sided, so yeah, that would have been hard, because there's a bunch of O, looks like O603 packages, top and bottom, and uh, some pretty fine, fine pitch things too, so it's nice that this was built, and uh, looks like maybe there are some some surface mount things you still need to do. And there's lots of parts. Yeah, so there we go. Um, PC board revision three. So this is the latest one. Um, you can find out more at uh, qrplabs.com. Go check, go check it out. Uh, I'm sure there's tons of videos on, uh, on YouTube about this project. Um, and we get some wire, some ferrite, or probably these are probably iron core. So I bought the 40 meter version, and so this is the low pass filter for the transmit to clean up. Uh, I've talked about low pass filters on 40 meters before, so this should look quite familiar when we build it. Um, got some feet, got some. Uh, I, I bought the one with the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Does anybody say that anymore? Guess idea. Uh, so it comes in a really nice uh, uh, metal case, it's all silk screened and everything. Uh, Kier, I believe it decodes uh, CW as well. I think you can put in the keyer, but I think it also, I think it will also decode the uh, the CW if, CW if I remember it right. And so uh, it uses a uh, uh, just a generic too long display on it. Nothing fancy there, no waterfalls or anything or anything like that. Um, yeah, so I think what I will do is uh, build this and I'll keep you guys informed along the way of how how things go and and uh, and then when we get it built we're gonna test it all out, align it and all that kind of stuff. I think that's more interesting for you guys to to see the measurement techniques for bringing up a new radio and making sure it's operating correctly and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have fun building this thing. All right, one thing about this kit is there's quite a few tor. I think there's five toroids that you have to wind. And uh, this one is the most complex. Uh, the other ones, I think, are just single windings, but this one has four different windings. One really long winding and then uh, three short windings, but they're all separated and... This one is is quite a quite a chore, and it looks much bigger here in the picture, but it's actually quite small, and the wire is quite fine as well. Now, the one thing I would have liked to know before I built this uh, kit, and so here's a heads up: this particular T1, the long winding, um, actually may need to be modified once you build the whole thing. There's a, a calibration uh, or uh, you know, there's a setup that you have to do, an adjustment that you have to do. And if a, a capacitor, there's a variable capacitor, and if that variable capacitor is, is, is too far to one side, you may have to add windings or subtract windings from this T1. 
So <laughs> unfortunately, it's soldered down to the board, and I had to add five windings to mine. And so you have to sneak it underneath this thing. So don't glue it down, you know, keep it mobile a bit. And uh, you may have to modify it. And so that that that's the most difficult thing about this kit is all of the toroids. Uh, here I've added a bunch of other uh, through-hole components, so it's starting to look like a radio. Did I say you have to wind lots of toroids? So uh, I found that you can kind of try to hold them in your hand, but these little toroids are like a half-inch diameter. They're quite small. So I found that holding them in the vise and then uh, using my other two hands to do the winding was, was much better. Here we have four of the five toroids uh, complete, and you can see it's starting to fill up the board. All right, here's uh, all the toroids down and some other components, so things are looking good. Now there's a little daughter card that holds uh, the front panel adjustments. There's two switches, there's a, a, a volume knob, a potentiometer, and then a rotary encoder. And the kind of the clever thing about these is they're mounted kind of upside down or inside out almost. There's a hole in the board and the, and the, and the parts go in there. Then you need to take the leads, which normally would go one direction, and you need to bend them 180 degrees so they reach the PC board from underneath. I actually think this is a quite clever thing. I'm going to use it uh, in some of my projects because these parts just sit way proud of the board and they just make everything difficult. But by recessing them this way, you have a much lower profile. So I, I like this trick that they did. So first power on and it, uh, it did something. So that's always a good, that's always a good, uh, a good thing. Now, when I first powered it up, uh, it, it had one problem and that is when I r rotated the rotary encoder, nothing happened. And one of the, um, there, there's a kind of a, a ground and an A and a B lead for the rotary encoder. And one of those was shorter to ground and I needed to just clean up that solder joint and uh, get rid of that solder to ground. And then my rotary encoder started working. So that was the one problem that I had. And here, what it looks like in the case, it, it, it's very professional. They, they did a really, really good job on this radio. All right, time to hook it up to the spectrum analyzer. And as a reminder, do not hook your radios up to spectrum analyzers. You will kill them. So here I've got one of my favorite attenuators. It's a 30 dB, 30 watt attenuator. So handles most of the things I want to measure and uh, keeps my analyzers happy. And here we see we're transmitting at 7.02 and it's measuring 7.0213. Um, and I'm getting uh, 36.92 dBm. Now, 37 dBm is 5 watts, so uh, it's putting out basically 5 watts. Um, very, very close. And this is at um, this is at 13.8 volts. So in order to get the 5 watts out, you need to be at 13.8 volts. All right, let's uh, widen the span here and take a look at the uh, harmonics. And so we see here our first harmonic uh, is uh, the, the second harmonic, and it is down by 50 dB. So they did a good job of uh, killing the harmonics, and there's no harmonics above it. This is the only harmonic that showed up on my measurement, so down 50 dB, very good. And here we zoomed in quite, quite, uh, quite small. I'm at a hundred, a hundred kilohertz uh, bandwidth. Um, I mean, a hundred hertz bandwidth. My resolution bandwidth is at a hundred hertz. So, taking a look at the fine structure of the, uh, of the signal, it looks pretty good. All right. So this measurement was at 12, 12 volts, twelve point zero volts. Uh, input and we're getting 35.57 dBm, so uh, not not the 37 that we did at 13.8 volts. All right, here it is uh, with an antenna hooked up to it, and it is it is a very nice radio. Um, you know, most of the radios, the kit radios that I've built, I've been c quite disillusioned with them. Um, 
I buy them because I like to build them. Not necessarily that I'm going to use them, but I just like building things. And radios are complex, and, and I, I enjoy them, and there's lots of things you can test-wise you can do with them or, or try them out and stuff. So I just, I just like the complexity of the radios. But most of the time, then they go in the junk drawer, and it's like, okay, built the kit, mm, kind of underwhelmed. I really don't care for it. This particular radio is actually a very nice little radio. Uh, it's very quiet. It, 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 the lo noise level is quite low on it. Um, it has a very, very narrow filter. So the CW filter is very good. It's a 200 hertz CW filter. Quite impressive. And it has CW decoding. So, so you, can actually, uh, you can actually listen to people... Uh, and not have to copy the code, just watch the little letters go by. So that's pretty cool. So I encourage people to go over to QRP Labs. They have all kinds of kits and uh, parts and things, uh, filters, all kinds of cool stuff. So peruse their, uh, peruse their website and uh, you might find something you want to buy.